Hey, welcome back to Core Cutting This Week, number 20. The show where I give you my opinion on some of the biggest stories in the world of core cutting, the ones I think be most impactful going forward. Now, this is my opinion. There are more in-depth looks at each one of these stories in the show notes. If you anything you find interesting, you wanna learn more about, check the show notes for a link to an in-depth story on this. But I just kinda of wanted to touch on what I think about a few of these shows. Now, it's hard to believe we've been doing this 20 weeks. Well, 20 plus weeks, because we miss a few weeks, which it's gonna be coming to an end. We're gonna to try to do this more consistently every week. Very rarely will I have to miss a week here and there. You may notice I'm still at my home office, the HQ. I posted a tour of it, put it up in one of these corners where you can see a full walkthrough of our new headquarters. I work there most of the days and I shoot most of our content there, but I wasn't very happy with the set we were using for this. So I, I talked about it in the tour I gave and we're gonna be having a new set here in a few weeks once I get time to put it together. I will be at NAB next week, the National Association of Broadcasters, looking at everything from the future of broadcast TV 3.0 to some meeting with some partners out there in the world of uh, core cutting, streaming over their TV, et cetera, to find out what's new in the world of broadcast television. So check out next week's show for more in depth on that. But once I get back, I'll build the new set and we'll hopefully be moving into uh, shooting this at the Core Cutters News headquarters soon. But hey, that's a little update what's happening with Core Cutters News. Let's dive into the news. Uh, right off the bat, one of the most interesting things I think we posted was actually posted today when I record this, is Spectrum is adding $64.89 to one customer's bundle. Now this is a triple bundle, it includes phone, internet, and TV. Uh, I thought it was very interesting to break it down and look at the different pricing on it. Um, when you look at this, about $9 or so, maybe up to 10 depending on how you look at it, was taxes. The rest of it, $55 um, plus dollars, was fees. And these include things like broadcast TV and sports programming for $11.59. That means you pay for Spectrum TV and you say, I want... I'm gonna get ABC, Fox, ESPN, Fox Sports 1, etc. But then on top of that fee you're paying for that, you also have to pay $11.55 for broadcast TV and sports fees. So it's kind of frustrating because you feel like, hey, I paid for this bill, right? No, you have to pay for it again on top of that. It doesn't stop there. Hey, so you pay for the TV service. You're, you can connect your TV to the wall, right, and watch it? No, because most Spectrum areas are digital or going digital. Now you have to pay an adapter per TV fee. So you have the HD technology set-top box fee of $11.75. That's the big main box you get for your main TV in your home. But now even smaller TVs, like in your bedroom, where in the past is like, oh, I just need a standard def picture, I can just connect it to the wall. Not anymore with the digital conversion at Spectrum. You now have to pay $4.99 per box. In this customer's case, they had five TVs. Sounds like a lot, but if you think about it, five TVs can go quick. You got one in the kids' room, bedroom, maybe um, you have a teenager who wants a TV in their room, uh, kids' playroom, and then maybe an office or a den. There you go, five TVs. It sneaks up on you before you know it. And that works out um, to $24.95 a month just for digital adapters. Um, in total, he's paying $36.70 to rent the boxes and the remotes for Spectrum on top of the fee for the TV. So you pay whatever the price of the TV is, plus you have to pay on every TV you want to be able to watch it. So. Keep an eye on that. That adds up to $440.40 a year. I guarantee you those boxes do not, or Spectrum doesn't need to pay that. Um, over uh, two years, $880.80 of a two year contract. That's a lot of money. You can do a lot of core cutting in just the fees. Heck, for $144, $140, excuse me, you can buy 11 Fire TV sticks and own them for life. And the Fire TV sticks, right now, let's be honest, those are more than powerful to stream um, what you want going forward. So there's also other fees, like a franchise fee of $5.67. You'd think Spectrum would know what the franchise fee is and can advertise to you, because they know what market, they're sending you flyers in the mail, they should know what that franchise fee is. Um, regulatory cost recovery fee for eight cents, not much, but hey, it adds up. And a um, capital fee of $1.78. You know, it really, you think you're paying one fee, 
And then before you know it, all these different fees, 60 and taxes get added on. $64.89 in this one customer's case. And that's how these bills get so big. They may advertise to you, you know, a triple pay bundle at $30 each. You know, $30 with each in like small letters next to it. And before you realize that's $90 plus $64.98, um, excuse me, in fees and taxes. And now your bill is over $150 bucks a month. And that's not what you thought you were going to be paying. So keep in mind, when you see these way too good to be true deals, that they often are too good to be true. They'll run advertising and they're being honest, it's in the small print. They're not lying to you, they're just not putting it up front. I would think that Spectrum in today's world should be, especially on their website, marketing to you what the actual cost um, will be. And let's not forget when those promotional rates end, that promotion, you know, $30 per phone, internet, and TV rate ends, suddenly that's much higher. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Next time somebody tells you that cable TV is cheaper, I always hear, well, cable TV is cheaper. Uh, really? Or $64.89 in fees and taxes? That's cheaper? So keep that in mind. Next up, Sling TV had a massive outage. Unfortunately, we don't know exactly what happened. It's the first major outage Sling TV has had in some time. They've been rock solid, one of the more reliable streaming services out there for some time. Went down um, late at night and it was out all night for most customers. Um, Sling TV has said they're sorry that they're working to address it. Uh, they said they worked through the, air, uh, through the night to find the root cause of the issue, but they have not said what it is. Um, I heard a lot of people, oh, you know, Streaming's not great, let's go back to cable, let's go back to satellite. Like cable never goes out. <laughs> That's my, make, my first thought. You go back to satellite, hey, it rains, the TV shuts off. I was at a restaurant a few nights ago, um, having dinner with my wife, and it rained really hard outside, and I looked at the TVs and they all went off. All the TVs were off and blank. And I remember thinking, oh, man, it's been a long time since I've had a weather-related outage. So the reality is, yeah, it sucks that Sling was out for a few hours this week, but in re in the big picture of it, cable goes out, satellite goes out way more often with weather outages. You know, it's just kind of one of those things to remember. S streaming is a new technology. I think it's way better. You think back to when Sling first launched a few years ago and outages were fairly common. Now when they happen, it really is a big surprise and newsworthy event because it's become so rare. So keep that in mind. I know it's, it stinks that um, you're, you couldn't watch TV when you woke up in the morning, but by prime time the next day, it was back live. Hang in there, you're saving a ton of money, and live TV streaming services will figure it out. PlayStation View's had some outages, DirecTV Now has had some, Hulu's had some, and more. Uh, the fact that they're out happens. It's a new technology, but when I looked at it, a lot of people are like, well, am I going to get a refund? I ran it. You know, it's like 70 some cents if you subscribe to the orange plan per day. And they weren't even out a full day. So if they did refund you, you're talking about 70 cents. So, and to me, it's not even worth the phone call or the time on um, message to try to get 70 cents. But maybe that's me. So just keep in mind, these things happen going forward. I think um, it's an interesting phase we're in. And this is what I wanted to talk about with this story. It's an interesting phase we're in with live TV streaming that now when they go out, it's a big newsworthy event. It used to be they were out so often that we almost didn't report on them anymore. And now we're so used to expecting them to be running that when they do go out, it's a shock. And that's a sign of progress in the world of cord cutting that we're getting to a point where we were over here where outages were the norm, baby technology, still learning it. Now we're out here where Outages are the rare exception, and we're when they do happen, we're upset about it. So we're making progress, we're going forward, it'll continue to go forward, and saving money kind of makes it all worthwhile. Next up, I don't really want to comment on this story. I do have some concerns about it a little bit, but I do wanted to bring up the CBS Sports, or CBS, excuse me, merger with Viacom. So CBS is rumored to be making a below market value um, all stock offer to Viacom. Reports are out there that Viacom may be countering that offer, but it's an interesting look that CBS looks at Viacom and says, 
we want to merge. I, it sounds more like a purchase, but they're saying merge with you, but we don't think you're worth what the market thinks you're worth. And that really is kind of like, whoa, what is happening at Viacom that CBS won't at least offer a at market rate, for example, purchase of Viacom. So keep an eye on the story. Viacom's of course countering. All reports say that Viacom and CBS want a deal done by May. Um, my concern here is that CBS and Discovery and others, I talked about in this past, may be repeating the mistakes of radio. Radio in the past, about 10 years ago, radio was where TV is today. And radio said, hey, um, all these radio stations are out there shrinking markets. Maybe we could get a bigger piece of a smaller pie and make the same amount of money. So like our Heart Radio and all these others went out there and bought up all these little station groups to make one massive station group. And now iHeartRadio is filing for bankruptcy because they can't pay the bills. I wonder if the same thing is going to happen with CBS, Discovery, and others. They're running out. They're buying these massive chunks of um, stations. You know, Discovery is buying or has purchased scripts, which includes HGTV, the Travel Channel. CBS is trying to merge, purchase, in my opinion, Viacom. I okay, I'm not a financial guy. I know there's different meanings behind each word. It just feels that way. Uh, Disney is buying most of Fox and they're taking on tons of debt to do it. And that throws up red flags to me right now. That with radio, having a bigger piece of a smaller pie still means you have a smaller pie. Still means you just took on a ton of debt to do that. And you may find yourself in a position of trouble. So keep an eye on the story. It'll be interesting to see if 10 years from now we are where radio is today. Hey, last up. We know when ESPN's new streaming service is going to launch. It's going to launch April 12th, next week, before we talk again next week. ESPN Plus will launch. It's $5 a month. It brings you access to a ton of content, including original documentaries, a full access to ESPN's 30 for 30 series, which is their first rate, even if you're not a sports fan, those 30 for 30 documentaries are really compelling, great content there. So check them out. Um, but Disney says they're going to have... Um, more than 180 games that you can subscribe to in out of game markets. And a channel network games that give you access in out of game, out of markets. You can um, add those in. Boxing, um, more than 250 major league soccer games. College sports. This one's a little interesting. It says thousands of live coverage of the MAC, MAC, Missouri Valley, um, Southern Conference, Sutherland, Sun Belt, WAC, and many other conferences out there for football, um, soccer, field track basketball, swimming, diving, lacrosse, wrestling, volleyball, and more. That sounds a lot like ESPN3. It makes you wonder if ESPN3 is going to shut down, which gives you free access to a ton of other games if you just uh, have access through a cable provider. Sometimes internet service providers include that with their service, so we'll have to keep an eye on that. Um, but this launches next week on April 12th. Keep a close eye on this. Everybody's watching this service. Is ESPN going to be successful for it? ESPN's kind of hinted that, hey, maybe in the future, somewhere way, we're talking way down the road, this could be how you get ESPN. You subscribe to their streaming service, and not only do you get this all this other content, but maybe someday in the future, they'll also offer their main linear, linear channels like ESPN, ESPN2, ESPNU, ESPN News, SEC Network. Currently, none of those networks will be included with this. This is all additional content on top of what they air on ESPN. So you're still going to need Sling TV, PlayStation View, DirecTV Now, etc., Hulu to access ESPN, uh, ESPN2, ESPNU, etc. Is there a demand for this? We'll see. Uh, I, I know I'm going to be trying out just to see what it offers. Seems like ESPN really wants to make something in depth for the sports fan. Would the sports fan be willing to pay $5 a month for this content on top of paying for ESPN, ESPN2, and more? So we'll wait and see what happens with that. All right, those are the biggest stories of the week that I think are most interesting, my viewpoints on them. Keep a close eye on these stories. Uh, do you have a story you would like to uh, add to this list? Do you have uh, your own thoughts on these stories? Leave me a comment, let me know. I would love to know what your opinion on the latest in core cutting news is and where you think core cutting is going. Let me know and hit that subscribe button, hit those notifications. I would love to hear from you. If you have a question about core cutting, join us every Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern for our weekly core cutting uh, uh, Q&A show where I do my best to answer your core cutting related questions. 
Thank you for watching. Please subscribe.